morning students and welcome you all students uh, today is the lecture number 11 which is the continuation of the uh, previous lecture series regarding the course that is the international criminal law and uh, uh, we are studying the topic substantive law of the international crimes and today is the second topic of that uh, series so uh, that is the today is the topic that is the crimes against crimes against humanity so here is the i'm going to uh, make you understand and uh, uh, we will uh, discuss uh, the theories uh, tags and uh, with the help of the uh, decisions of the international courts and uh, there are different articles uh, which we ha- i have already shared with you so with the help of th- uh, those material Uh, we will understand uh, the crimes against humanity how the uh, that crimes are different uh, with the war crimes and first the uh, notion of crimes against the humanity in this uh, in uh, in my lecture i am going to offer uh, you a conception of the crimes against humanity and justification for the international prosecution of these crimes an important implication of the view uh, i will offer is that the category of the crimes against humanity should be expanded to cover crimes that are not currently covered by uh, covered by the international law this in turn uh, would have important uh, consequences in terms of the types of the crime that can be justifiably prosecuted and punished uh, punished by the international community so let's we start by uh, uh, by understanding something about uh, the structure of the crimes against humanity is they are currently understood the rome institute uh, list a series of particularly serious crimes such as murder insolvent torture rape and enforced prostitution and then specifies that these acts are to be considered crimes against humanity when they are committed as part of the wider spread or systematic attack directed against any civilian population with the knowledge of the attack therefore in order to count as a crime against humanity an act must meet two conditions first the act must fall within the list of the inhuman acts atomized in the statute second act must fulfill the so called contextual element that is the must be committed as part of the wider attack against a specific group we can identify four salient features of the notion of the crimes against humanity as it is currently understood these are the uh, uh, four notion of the crimes against humanity number 1 they constitute particularly odious ado- uh, uh, offenses these crimes are so barbarous as to violate the human dignity of the victims they are international crimes these crimes concerns the international community rather than just the domestic political community and therefore trigger international in- intervention it is permissible for the international community to trump state sovereignty in order to punish them number 3 they have a policy element they are committed instigated or at least tolerated by a state a de facto authority or politically organized group number 4 uh, they have a collective uh, element and uh, they target victims or members of a group so this is not to say that crimes against humanity cannot be committed by individuals nor is it to say that wrong doers must be moved by the desire to target their victims who are members of of uh, of the group the idea is rather that crimes against humanity can be committed by individuals only to extend that they can be seen as part of the wider spread or systematic attack this requires uh, wrong doers to be aware that their victims belongs to a group that is targeted uh, by the wider attack it is in this sense uh, that crime against humanity are group based they can be committed against individuals only 
and uh, in so far as the uh, group to which uh, these individuals belong is also attacked which um, uh, rules out the possibility that the isolated crimes can be crimes against humanity crimes against humanity always target simultaneously individuals and their groups as per according to the orthodox view the collective element and the policy element which together cash out the uh, contextual element of the crimes against humanity or what account for the seriousness of these crimes so students uh, after understanding the uh, introduction uh, of the crime which we have understand uh, the crime uh, of uh, crime against humanity can be committed against the individual as well as collective group of the population and uh, uh, the crimes which are related with the crime against humanity are those crimes which are targeted against a population and which are very barbaric, inhuman, and uh, uh, widespread murders, uh, rape, and and the and the condition of the crime is that that must be against the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, element is must be wider spread. So. Uh, in order to um, uh, move further, uh, we have to understand what is the history, uh, what is what are the historical background regarding the crime against immunity. Historical development, uh, as far as concerned to the uh, crimes against immunity, are that the modern concept of the crimes so heinous uh, that they uh, offend the laws of the humanity and the civilization began to appear in international discourse in the early 20th century. Uh, the 1899 and 1907 Hague Convention provided that even in war, the inhabitants and, uh, and childs and other uh, unarmed uh, civilians remain under the protection of, uh, of the laws of the humanity and the uh, dictates of the public conscience. Uh, in order to uh, understand further that the Turkish massacres of the Armenian population, the French, British, and Russian governments issued the declaration of 28th May 1915, declaring uh, that the Turkish authorities would be held responsible for its crimes against humanity and civ uh, civil uh, civilization. This declaration was not, however, uh, followed by further action. Thereafter, uh, the 1919 report uh, of the Commission on the Responsibility of the Authors of the War and uh, enforcement of the penalties uh, formulated by the representative from the several states and presented to the uh, Paris Peace Conference also referred to the offenses against uh, the immunity, the laws of the immunity. But however, although uh, the concept of the crimes against humanity was recognized long before the number it was first prosecuted as a punishable individual uh, criminal offense uh, which the second world war article 6 clause uh, c of the Nuremberg charter provided uh, the first definition of the crime against humanity uh, sorry crime against the humanity and that is that is the definition which is uh, initially uh, discuss the number uh, charter that is the murder extri uh, extermination uh, insolvation uh, and deportation and other inhuman acts committed against uh, any civilian population before or during the war or prosecutions on uh, political racial or religious grounds uh, in execution of or in a, a connection with any crime within the jurisdiction of the tribunal whether or not in violation of the domestic law of the country uh, where uh, where perpetrated and uh, article 5 clause c of the tokyo charter defined crimes against immunity in identical terms in article 6 clause c of the nuremberg charter but however the nuremberg tribunal did not treat crime against immunity as a self standing crime since the article 6 clause c of the nuremberg charter required that crimes against humanity be committed in connection with another crime within the jurisdiction of the tribunal that is the war crimes or crimes against uh, the peace so it should be uh, noted that the article 2 uh, article 2 uh, um, clause 1 and c of the control council law 
uh, which defined crimes against immunity no longer linked uh, the concept of the crimes against immunity with the armed conflicts and it did not require that the crimes against immunity be committed in execution of or in connection with war uh, crimes uh, of the crimes against the uh, uh, crimes against peace crimes against humanity uh, atrocities and offenses including but not limited to murder uh, extermination uh, insolvent and deportation imprisonment torture rape or other inhuman acts uh, committed against any civilian population or prosecution on political racial or religious grounds whether or not uh, in the violation of the domestic laws of uh, the country uh, uh, were uh, perpetrated crimes against humanity truly took hold as a separate uh, basis of individual criminal responsibility with the new definition in article 5 uh, of the isty uh, statute and the subsequent judicial collaboration as per the uh, isty statute article 5 crime against humanity the international tribunal shall have the power to prosecute persons responsible for the uh crimes when committed in armed conflict whether international or internal uh, in character and uh, directed against any civilian population so these are the crimes uh, which uh, committed during the armed conflict that is the murder extermination insolvent deportation imprisonment torture rape and uh, uh Pers um, uh, prosecution on political uh, sorry prosecution on political racial religious grounds and other uh, inhuman acts although the isty uh, statute restricted crimes against the immunity to uh, those uh, uh, committed in armed conflict whether international or internal uh, in character uh, thus relating a link to armed conflict crime against immunity uh, therefore to on an independent existence is a distinct uh, category of the crime and there uh, thereafter the definition of the crime against humanity in the ISTR uh, Rwanda uh, tribunal statute uh, which follows the ISTY statute uh, Yugoslavia tribunal with the uh, with the these modifications uh, there is no requirement of on conflict uh, there is an explicit requirement that the Uh, attack be wider spread or systematic there's an additional requirement that the underlying uh, uh, crimes be committed on the uh, discriminatory uh, grounds as per the article 3 of the ISTR ISTR statute uh, which is the crime against humanity which is the modification of the previous definition uh, given in the article 5 uh, of the ISTY uh, Uh, the definition has been provided in article 3 with the modification that there is no need to link that crime with the armed conflict the definition of the crime against humanity in article 2 of the uh, sina luna uh, tribunal closely tracks the istr article 3 uh, therefore without the reference in the uh, letter to the attack uh, uh, being on uh, national or political ethnic racial or the religious grounds the law on the establishment of the uh, ECCC closely tracks the definition in the ISTR statute despite the fact that the agreement between the UN and the government of the Cambodia provides that the subject matter of the ECCC shall be crime against humanity as defined in the 1998 ICC statute of the International Criminal Code so it was uh, uh, that is the uh, historical development and background uh, regarding the uh, Uh, crime against humanity and further uh, we will understand uh, the uh, definition as per the icc institute in the next lecture thank you